Hi hey folks, in this project we're going to build a beam deflection calculator. Now, we've talked about beam deflection uh, quite a bit on degree tutors. Uh, we started off talking about beam deflection or calculating beam deflection from first principles. Uh, and, and in that we focused on analytical integration. We focused on integrating the differential equation of the deflection curve analytically. And that process is absolutely fine. Uh, but in this project, it's going to be slightly different. We're going to approach that integration numerically. Now, this is quite nice because it fits what we're trying to do here, which is build a calculator. We want to ultimately have a piece of code that we prescribe the inputs for, and we just let it run. It captures all the logic uh, to calculate the deflection of our beam. And a numerical solution fits that quite well because we don't have to come along and construct these equations for the bending moment as a function of x. And so that's where uh, we're going to focus on in this project. So let's just start off here by pointing to a few resources uh, for the purposes of uh, your reference, basically. So this was this is where the conversation started. This was uh, our initial discussion of beam deflection from first principles. Uh, this is the starting point. So again, it all hinges on this equation here. This is your differential equation of the deflection curve. And we're again going to use that equation in this project. We're just going to handle the integration differently. So uh, this project process is uh, this first process, uh, this analytical integration process. It's fine, it works really well, uh, but it gets really lengthy uh, once the loading on your beam starts to become anything other than very simple loading. From once you your bending moment for your beam needs to be broken up, uh, or your bending moment diagram needs to be broken up into a number of different segments, then the process starts to get quite tedious. It's not complex, it's just quite long. Now, we sort of evolved the discussion a little bit from here and we introduced in a later discussion uh, Macaulay's method. So Macaulay's method was uh, essentially an analytical integration again. It's just that the process was slightly different. And in altering the process of how we managed that integration, we uh, essentially sped the thing up. We, we improved the efficiency of our process, essentially. Uh, but we were, again, just integrating this equation here to go from d2v dx2 down into, uh, down into v, so a double integration, essentially, to get v to deflection. So we talked about that uh, in some detail, actually, the whole process. But what I want to draw your attention to in this particular post is all the way down here, we start or we finished up this uh, this post by looking at this example. So we applied Macaulay's method to calculate the deflection of this beam. This is going to be an important beam for us because this is going to be the case that we're going to build our deflection calculator around. And it's also going to be one of the validation cases that we use to test uh, to test our code. So we're going to come back and we're going to see this guy in some detail. Right. So the other thing that I want to do is, uh, before we finish up this short intro video, is to just give you an idea of um, the end the end result, essentially, what it is we're trying to build to sort of help motivate you to get all the way to the end. So let's jump over to this guy here. So this is our, this is our finished notebook. Now, the first thing you'll notice straight away is this particular notebook that you're looking at here. I'll just zoom in a little bit. This particular notebook is not just the deflection calculator. It's actually a bending moment shear force and deflection calculator. So this project is actually going to build on top of a project that we've done previously, which was, let me see, how do I get back here now? This guy here. So not too long ago, um, I put this project out, which was building a shear force and bending moment uh, diagram calculator. So this is the project we're going to build off of. If you haven't completed this project, first, this shear a moment calculator, I'd suggest pausing this project now and going back and, and starting and completing this project because we're basically going to build onto the end of this project. Now, we're doing that really for one reason and one reason only. Our deflection calculator is going to take as its raw inputs the values of bending moment at each position along the beam, right? That, and, and this calculator basically gives us that. This shear and moment calculator gives us exactly that information. And so it's convenient to just build onto the end of it uh, a deflection calculator. But if you, have a, if you have a beam and you have the bending moment at all positions along that beam, at sort of short intervals along that beam, you can apply the calculator we're going to build in this project to that. Um, so really, you don't have to necessarily build onto the end of this notebook. I just have for convenience. 
So again, that's the, the project that we're building on. So let me go back over to uh, the actual notebook. So this is the notebook. The vast majority of all of this code we wrote in a previous project, but what we're gonna focus on now, it's a shear force in our bending moment diagram. What we're gonna focus on in this project is basically from here on down. So the actual deflection calculation and the algorithm uh, that we're gonna put together. And what is the end result? Well, first of all, let me go back to the top here. So this is all we want the user to have to specify. We just want them to specify the span of their beam. Um, this particular calculator will be able to handle overhangs or cantilever overhangs on the left-hand side and or the right-hand side of the beam. So that's where this A and this B come in. Um, and then we just want to specify the force data. Uh, or the force location so we can deal with point loads point moments distributed loads and we can also in this calculator handle uh, linearly varying distributed loads although there's none in this particular uh, in this particular example so let's scroll on down here and just see what the uh, end result of this is going to be again we've seen all this previously in the previous project but what we're going to get out of this project is this guy here now let me just let me just highlight my user input here so the additional pieces of information we're going to have to put into this are going to be uh, this guy called delta rotation. Don't worry about that for now. We'll explain that shortly. Uh, we're going to need to put in an initial rotation value. Again, don't worry about that guy. We'll explain that in a little while. But what I wanted to highlight was this. Young's modulus and I, the second moment of area. They're the additional pieces of information that we're going to need in order to calculate deflections. So we're going to input this additional information. Of course, you could take all of this and you could put it back up here with all of your inputs. So they all live in the one place. It just for the purposes of this project, it made sense to sort of have everything separated out. And we're going to, well, when you run this notebook, you end up, don't worry about any of this jazz here. We'll discuss that shortly. This is your deflected shape, and this is what your notebook is going to give you, uh, the value of deflection at every point along your beam. Now, the very final thing we're going to do in this project is validate uh, our deflection. So this is actually the deflection for, for this guy here, okay? And we already calculated the deflection for that guy there using Macaulay's method, so let's scroll on down. to this guy here. So this was the deflection that we got using our analytical solution. Macaulay's method in this case. And then this is the deflection we got using our numerical solution. So at the end of the day, sort of the, the punchline here is when you compare those two deflections, you get good agreement. So you've got the green line here is the deflection from Macaulay's method, analytical solution. And the yellow line, which you can see lies directly on top of it almost perfectly, is the deflection that our calculator is going to give us using a numerical approach. Now, I guess one of the things I probably should have pointed out before now is a numerical solution is an approximation. We're going to be approximating um, the, the analytical solution. You can think of the analytical solution as the gold standard, the benchmark, that's the actual solution. Um, obviously, there are caveats around the differential equation of the deflection curve and where and when that does and doesn't apply. But let's assume that's the equation, that's the equation we're happy with. Then when it comes to processing that equation, the analytical processing will give us the, let's call it the benchmark solution, the solution. And then our numerical solution is always approximating that benchmark analytical solution. And we can improve that approximation in a number of different ways, which you can see a nice sort of simple visual representation here shows us that our deflection is very, very closely, our numerical deflection is very closely approximating our analytical deflection. So the long and short of it is we're happy with it. So that's the end result. That's what we're going to build um, over the course of this uh, fairly short video series, this mini project. Um, I guess what I'll say next is in the next video, we're going to we're going to take a step away from coding. We'll be doing any coding in the next video. We're going to just talk about and try and understand logically what is it we're doing. What's our process um, and how are we going to implement this? And then thereafter, we'll start thinking about writing the code and actually implementing it. But probably the one most important video in this whole project is the next one where we're just going to have a think about how do I take this numerical integration process? Well, first of all, what's it look like? And then how do I take that process and turn it into um, a, an algorithm or a bunch of logic that's going to give me my deflection? So that's the next video. So we'll pick up the discussion in the next one.